Good evening. Come on. This is such a wonderful moment for me. And I have looked forward to this moment in time. And for me, this marks the beginning of a new journey in my life. So, Mr. Chairman. Not hearing me? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Branch President and members. Other members of the head table. Colleagues and comrades. I consider it a privilege to serve with you, the Barbados Labour Party family, in the cause of our nation as a member of the candidate team for the upcoming election. And that is the people I am here today because of a number of people. I am here today because of my family, and my mother is here to celebrate with me. Mom just gave me a little wave. here because of the canvassers of the St. James South Branch. I am here because of the party supporters. And of course, I am here because of the Senate. That is of Fernie Hurst. <laughs> I am here because of the unwerving support of the St. James South Branch executive and members who insisted that I was the one they wanted for their constituency. <laughs> I am here because of other key persons. Firstly, Liz Thompson, whose confidence in my ability to be able to take on the opponent and to care for the constituency that she had served proved invaluable in being successful in my nomination bid. I also have to give thanks not only to Liz Thompson, but to Mia Motley who opened the door for me to be able to join the party and to participate in this political action and party life. And she was the one that gave me the opportunity to work in St. Michael Northeast, to hone my skills and to contribute to our great party. And I wish to thank her as well. But the person who sparked my initial vision decades before was my teacher who turned a boring, incomprehensible subject into a living, lifelong fascination with the management of Caribbean economic affairs. The insight that I gained fueled a passion for engaging the political arena so that I could participate in shaping the future of what the Caribbean is going to be. This person is a passionate regionalist, a shrewd tactician, and gifted economist with the spirit of an entrepreneur, none other than Owen Seymour. <laughs> he completed that work that he started decades ago back at UE last year by declaring in typical alpha fashion at Convermere School with just that touch of the prophetic in his voice. Husband, you need to go to St. James South. I'm going to support you. And with that, he sealed this moment in my life and sealed this moment in my history. So I have come, I have come to this moment which is a watershed in the history of our nation. For what we do individually and collectively as a people will determine the destiny, security, and future prosperity, not only of St. James South, but this nation. In St. James South, there are some who are discouraged and who cannot find the inspiration to participate in our wider society. And I have been moved as I have interacted with the constituents by the frustration that I've heard in their voices, in the voices of our young men who cannot find work, in our young men who cannot take care of their families. I've also been moved with the care and concern of our women who are finding it difficult to make ends meet and who find it difficult to pay the bills and to take care of their children. I am concerned 
as I see the threat posed to the gains of our middle class and our more affluent citizens who stand to lose significant ground that they would have gained over the past 14 years under the Oinaka administration. I see a generation of young school leavers who stare hopelessness in the face, who for the past three years have been unable to find a way to enter the job market, and retirees whose golden years can be scarred by scarcity. And they have all been victims of the careless, uninformed policies justified by the ignorance and arrogance that has come to characterize the Democratic Labour Party. I have never seen anything of the like where they could take a crisis and through ineptitude make it worse. What we have before us today, ladies and gentlemen, is a government which has come to office without a plan. Now that would be laughable in the best of times, but it has proven disastrous in these, the worst of times. It has brought the political and economic playbook of Barra's era to seek to manage the complexities of these intricate times, thus jeopardizing the excellent work that we would have done in 14 years. For in the midst of the worst crisis, this Democratic Labour Party has accelerated, and I repeat it, they have accelerated the negative impact through their mismanagement and inappropriate policies. Because when time and time again, those actions have proven to be folly, things like raising utility costs and raising fuel costs and increasing taxation, how do the Dems respond? Well, they respond not unlike a drunk driver, caught off guard in a near collision, went to mash the brake and mash the gas instead, <laughs> thereby making the level of job loss and suffering in our working class communities more intense than it needed to be. So instead of getting a fender bender, the refusal to switch from gas back to the brake pedal has caused the Dems to leave an unnecessary trail of carnage, while claiming all the while that it is solely the result of an external crisis. Nowhere is this more clearly seen than in the actions of the current representative of this constituency and Minister of Health, Don Bolinis, and the issue of the changes that he has made in the healthcare system. What we have come to expect is that this minister will fly off at the mouth to capture headlines and make pronouncements. But when it comes to careful thought, careful planning, he falls short in these skills for the short-term gratification of speaking and seeing himself in the paper. But I have a word for him. Wise men speak because they have something to say. Fools because they have to say something. without planning has made Donville Ennis the most destructive minister of health that our country has seen. Already made, 
and he is only now asking immigration how many people will be affected. Only now. And now with his back to the wall, Donald Ennis comes out with a lame mantra of the DLP, we still looking at it. Now today we find him in the paper, shifting his position, whining, it ain't really me. The law states that we should not. And I'm only following the law. I am not responsible. I paid for my sons. Well, Mr. Innes, are you saying that others must pay for theirs too? How come your sons get their papers processed and thousands of others have not gotten theirs? Yeah. Mr. Minister, others will not have your deep pockets to pay for health services. And they will not have your influence to be able to reach persons in authority to rectify the immigration situation. As the Minister of Health, you are charged with addressing the needs of an entire population of every man, woman, child, native and stranger alike. And you have to change those policies. These are people who work in our communities beside us. They're caregivers. They may be nurses. They may be teachers. They may be working in stores downtown. They may be working in homes, babysitting our gas stations or in supermarkets. And you are now seeking to do what you should have done in the first place. Search the facts. The truth is, you cannot offer proper health planning. Thus, you deprive some and put at risk the health of all. Integrity and care is more than words. What Donald Ennis has sought to do is to camouflage a revenue-raising measure within a cost-reducing measure. Why else would you charge different user fee levels based on the cost of the item? Is it more difficult to dispense medicine that costs more than one that costs less? Have you no thought? Is disease so selective that expensive diseases only afflict the well off and low-cost diseases afflict the poor? If this is not ignorance of the highest order, I don't know what is. that live in Durance and Halls Village and Haynesville and Husbands now have to leave their neighborhood pharmacy and trek every month instead to a polyclinic and wait a long line to get their medication. Oh, and complaint after complaint has been put on the table and he does not have the courage to rise up and change it. Let me tell you something, representation of the people of St. James South cannot be done with grandstanding and photo ops. It can't be superficial with a little road here and a little road there and a little hut. The representation must change the lives of people and provide opportunities for young and old alike in a way that is timely. Timely. Where are the plans to assist? in easing the income constraints in the houses of our constituents. Where are your initiatives to ease the impact of the rip of taxation which your government has applied across their backs? Where was your voice when the clico affair sought to strip our middle class retirees of the money that they had put aside to preserve them and meet the needs of their old age? But now, with the close of an election gathering on the horizon, mothers suddenly become important to him. A road could get fixed. That is gimmickry, and it's all about gimmicks. And I say no. I say a thousand times no. St. James South needs more than that, and I'm prepared to give it better than that. Damaged by the Dems and the crisis to our economy and health system is not all you know. It is only part of the challenge that we Barbadians will face in the days ahead. For there are other challenges that we must now face with a broken economy and social institutions that have been stunted in their transformation to meet the needs of this new day. This will make the path ahead extremely difficult. But with the Barbados Labour Party at the helm of government, it will not be impossible. We have done it before and we will do it again. So it behoves us as the 
Barbados Labour Party then to rise once more to the yes. challenge before yes. us. Yes. We must devise strategies yes. for the sustainable generation yes. of foreign exchange, yes. for the creation of opportunities for the advancement of the aspirations of our young. We must devise strategies to create a sustainable approach to financing our social services and ensure that we preserve access for all. And most importantly, strategies to maintain social cohesion in the family, in the community, in the society, and integration in an increasingly culturally diverse society that operates on a global platform. Colleagues, we must approach this moment not as our right or as the natural momentum of things, but with sober preparation and diligent engagement. We must seek to bring the best of ourselves and the best of Barbados to bear and to offer to our people the best governance that they so richly deserve. We must build a nation that is economically prosperous to undergird the foundation of a socially just society. In the words of John Ruskin, when we build, let it be such work as our descendants will thank us for. And let us think as we lay stone upon stone that a time will come when these stones will be held sacred because our hands have touched them. And that men will say as they look upon them, see this our fathers did for us. No, we cannot do this alone. While we are more than capable as a party of creating a formidable and ambitious strategy to achieve these objectives, the success of this enterprise will depend on the extent to which we can share this vision and involve our people, large and small, black and white, working class, middle class, upper class, so that we can mobilize the resources, the talent, and efforts of the nation in one direction, moving towards one common goal. This we must do in the face of renewed international economic aggression, fortified trade blocks, and the use of dominance in the world market to limit the possibilities of small nations like ours. It will call for a level of aggression and confidence and the deep, resolute spirit of the Barbadian on the sharp, visionary, and multi-talented leadership to take this fight. This we must take with us as we engage. But to preserve and create success for all Barbadians so that they are able to access the spoils of our future economic success will call for a transformation of our institutions transformation of education and the legal system, the commercial system, and the public sector. To guarantee the participation of all will also require a change in the way our citizens engage the opportunities. This too must be the work of our hands in this hour. Citizens, you too must play your part in preserving a just society by raising your voice and using your economic and political power to discourage those who would take advantage of you as consumers, as users of public services, of those who would leave you to pick up the tab of corporate mismanagement while others walk away with the spoils. Citizens must raise their voice against government incompetence and the unscrupulous participation by this government in the rape of the treasury, an offense in the best of times and a tragedy in the worst of times. Indeed, the lessons of these few three years have shown that this current DLP party is not the friend of the poor, nor the friend of the small man, nor the friend of the ordinary taxpayer, nor do they hold 
walk with the integrity that they like to walk about and talk so much. I am talking about hundreds of small contractors who were vilified and pilloried by the Minister of Housing to give credence to his decision and the Minister of Finance to place in the hands of two large corporations more than $2 billion in government construction contracts at a time when work is scarce and small contractors were losing their businesses, closing their doors and artisans were losing the means to take care of their families and the small shops which served them were crumbling. After the irreparable damage was done, they now want to offer us a few crumbs from the table. The Dems might find that acceptable, but for we Barbadians, it is not. We are talking about a government who will bring to the public figures about a boom in the tourism industry. And we still have people from the tourism sector in Hainesville and Halls Village who cannot find employment or full-time employment as we speak. We are talking about a government which seeks to preserve the kingdom of their friends while hazarding the future of our retirees and the hard-earned investments of others. And then they have the gall to vilify these victims as being greedy and stupid. This may be acceptable to the Dems, but it's not acceptable to us as Canadians. I am talking about inflation spiraling out of control and taxation measures squeezing the means out of every home. Again, blaming the victims for living large and wanting too much as though we strive with our education and careers to now be satisfied to have a plate of food on the table. We struggle now to pay indecent like bills, outrageous food prices, from paychecks reduced by poor government policies. And you know what crowns this all? That the Democratic Labour Party could come to power on the accusation of corruption and the anthem of integrity and today have brought no evidence, no indictments, no legislation. This may be acceptable to them, but it's not acceptable to us. If we as a nation are to rise above the disgraceful fecklessness of the Dems, above the poverty of institutions, above the aggression of the international economic community, then we must rise. We must rise. We must lay off timidity and clothe ourselves with boldness and confidence. We must be resolute, determined, and armed to take the fight forward for the sake of every man, woman, and child in this nation. And it's to this moment that I have come to political life. It's to this cause that I made the sacrifice. It is with this talk of mind that I come to you colleagues and I join hands with you to carry this fight. I am not here to ride on the backs of the people of St. James South to a political future based on expediency but rather to bring value to your lives as I've done in the past for others in groups and companies and churches and small businesses across this nation. That is my pledge to you. Colleagues, we must stand shoulder to shoulder, united by common cause, and let us not be distracted or take our eyes from this goal. We must take this fight with all of our might and rise to the defense and the prosperity of this nation. For it is time to rise, 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 a whole land become lion.